Hi, and welcome back to Bus Vintage Bikes. So in this video, I thought I'll take you through the process of restoring a set of Dura Ace cranks. So a fellow collector and mate of mine, Sean, dropped this off with me and asked me if I could give them a clean up and a decent polish. The cranks have seen a hard life, as you can see. A lot of scuff marks on them, mostly from a shoe and if you look carefully, you can see those pit marks that have gone through the anodizing. That's normally from weathered marks and it's corrosion that gets in under the anodizing and starts eating away at the aluminium. On the inside of the crank, you can see a gouge mark where the chain has dropped at some stage. That'll need to get taken out as well. These cranks have an anodized coating on them, as you can see. So step one in the process is to remove that anodized coating so you can get to the base metal. So what I commonly use to remove anodizing on any of my group sets is a scotch bright pad. I'm just taking you through the process here of how I add this pad onto my drilling machine using this little gadget. These can be bought at most hardware stores and work really well. An alternative to remove anodizing is oven cleaner. You'll normally spray it on and leave it around 10 minutes before removing it. But I find that it requires multiple passes to get rid of the anodizing. I just find it quicker to use a scotch Brite pad. You just need to be really careful which pad you decide to use. Because you don't want to scratch your piece too badly. Otherwise it requires a lot of sanding. Here you can see the piece once the anodizing has been removed. It looks like it's got scratch marks on it, but those scratch marks are way more shallow than what the actual pitting is. So they'll be removed rather quickly when I start with my sanding. You can see the condition of the scotch Brite pad as well. Now for the time consuming part of the process. I'm going to start with 600 wet paper to cut the piece down and remove as much of the pitting and scratches as what I can. You can go down to 400, even 220 if needed. These cranks are bad, but they're not so bad that I really need to go that low. I have a set of soft jaws that I bought for my vise. They're magnetized on the back. And they simply slide in and, and clip into place. It's held securely by the magnets. So this allows me to place the piece in the vise. And because they have a rubber insert on the inside, it stops the piece from getting damaged. So I'll normally use the vise when I want to sand one of the surfaces down and not round the edges. So I'll often take a little piece of a little block of wood and then just wrap the wet paper around it and I wet the paper and then it allows me to, to sand that surface without the risk of rounding out that edge too much. So you want to keep the part as original as possible. So once you've done with this process, you want to have cut back as much of the marks as possible. You don't want to rely on your next grades of wet paper. So you'll be moving on to 800, then 1000, etc. You don't want to rely on those to cut all those marks out. It's at this stage that you want to get rid of them. For this particular crank set, Sean's request was that I do not cut the crank set right down to clear all the blemishes out of it. He wanted the crank to look still slightly aged when I was finished with the process so that it matched with the rest of the group set as the rest of the group set wasn't being restored. So you will notice that there are some pit marks left in the crank but this was done on purpose. Yeah, I was moving through the different grades of paper. So I went from 800 wet paper, make sure I get rid of all the scratches that I put into the part with the 600 and then moving to 1000, then on to 1200, then on to 1500 and at that stage that will be my final pass on wet paper. Of course there's nothing stopping you from going on to 2000 and 3000 wet paper as well, it's just more time consuming. And the result isn't much better because once I put it on the buffing wheel, I achieved the result from 1,500 grit. So when you finish the 1,500 or the 2,000, if you move on, 
you'll notice the part is left with this rather dull look to it as the paper is very fine and you know you've done your job properly. If at this stage you notice deep marks in the part that you don't want to be there, you need to go all the way back to 600 paper and start this process over and then obviously move through the grades again to get rid of the scratches from the paper. So it's important when you start with this, with the 600 or the 400 if you're using it, be careful to, to spend the time and make sure that the part is in the condition you want it before moving on to the next grades of paper. So at this stage, I was happy with the results. I could see some pitting, but not too much. And you know you've done your job well when your hands look like this. I really should have been wearing gloves, but unfortunately I'd ran out of my disposable gloves. You'll also be left with a pile of wet paper from all the grades of sandpaper that you've been moving through. It's a time consuming process, but it's certainly worth the results if you take the time to do it properly. So after the 1500 wet paper, it's onto the buffing wheel. Yeah, I was just adding a rubbing compound to the wheel before starting with the buffing. I'm going to take you through just the first part of the crank. I did half of it just to show you the result that can be achieved on the buffing wheel. You can notice the difference between the part that the piece that's been done and the piece that's obviously now being buffed up. The results are quite remarkable and it's rather rewarding, I must admit. Then it was back onto the buffing wheel to finish the part off. When using the wheel, I want to make sure that I get rid of as many scratches as possible that was left in the part with the 1500 wet paper. You can see the part has turned out really well, but you can also notice some of those blemishes. Those were obviously left there on purpose, as I had mentioned. Now it was time to move on to restoring the pantography on that crank. So I prefer using Tamiya semi-gloss black for restoring the paint on the pantography. And I'll apply it using a toothpick. A number of YouTubers have asked if you need to use a primer before applying this enamel paint. No, you don't. But what you do want to make sure is to clean the pantography engraving very well before you start. So I normally use an earbud with rubbing alcohol and make sure that I clean that, those grooves out really well. And then when you are applying the paint as I'm doing here, don't be too concerned to go outside of the lines. It's fine if you apply too much paint because once the paint dries, it'll settle into the groove and you'll be left with it on the outside as it is here. I then leave the paint to dry overnight, making sure it's dried properly. I know some guys will wipe off the wet paint using a tissue cloth. I prefer not doing that because I find once it dries, it settles better. Then I'll use a hard plastic. Yeah, it's just a voucher card and I'll scratch off the paint on the edges You'll see it comes off really easy once your part is, has been polished. If you've done your job well, you should be left with an almost factory looking crank once you've finished with this entire process. So I hope this video encourages you to try and restore some of your own parts on your vintage bikes. You can see it's not really that complicated, although it is a time consuming process. I think this crank set alone, the spider and the non drive side, took around four hours to complete. Here's some before and after photos. If you enjoyed this video, could I ask that you like and subscribe to my channel to see some of the other projects that I get up to? Thanks for watching. Cheers.